Good morning. My name is Sheila Burgess, and I'd like to welcome you this morning to the Sterling First United Methodist Church. Whether you are joining us in person or via our live stream, we're glad you are with us today. We have a few quick announcements this morning. Connect Community Meals return this week. So this Wednesday, we are serving food. Dinner will be served from 5 to 6.30 p.m. in Fellowship Hall and Ladies of the Church. After that, we have M&Ms, and we would love you to come and join us. And you know, our M&M time, it's really more of a prayer time. Our meeting is always very, very short, and we do a lot of praying for our community and for our church, and so we would love for anyone to come and join us. Connect Kids and Connect Youth activities are on break this week. They will resume next Wednesday on January the 10th. This afternoon, Pastor Amy and Mike will be hosting a come and go holiday open house at the Parsonage from two to four. All are invited to stop by for a time of food and fellowship. The church office will be closed tomorrow and Tuesday in observance of the new year. The office will be open for business on Wednesday. Registration for the Connect 242 Intergenerational Spring Retreat to Colorado continues through the end of December which that's today, guys. Um, come and get away to beautiful Estes Park and the YMCA of the Rockies for three days of building up your relationship with God and others. For, informa for more information about the retreat, please contact the church office. Are there any other announcements? Okay. <clears throat> Morning, church. Uh, just a reminder that this Friday, our church is going to be hosting fifth quarter here. So if you would like to donate any food, funds, or be a volunteer to hang out with us late into the night here at the church, uh, please come and talk to me. Thank you. Any other announcements? Okay, if we can be in prayer for you, please let us know via the church office. We'd love to be praying for you in any way that we can. And at this time, let us turn our attention to the praise team as we prepare our hearts for worship. Good morning, church family. It's so good to see you all. Today is a special day for a number of reasons. I'm sure you all were aware that today is the unofficial international day of uh, 123123. Does anybody know the date? 123123. You can laugh. Yeah, there you go. Okay, yeah. 123123. Yes, there we go. It's the Walt International, unofficial international waltz day. No. Anyway, sorry. We're, we're still waking up. It's a bad dad joke to start the morning. So <laughs> it is the last day of the year, and um, it is also still. The Christmas season, and that's the beauty in the church is we get to celebrate Christmas not just for a day, but for a whole season, for 12 days, leading up through Epiphany, which is next weekend. So um, we are grateful this morning that we can gather together to worship God and to uh, remember and celebrate the light of the world who's come into the world. So would you please stand and join us this morning as we lift our hearts and our voices to God in worship. bleak midwinter all creation groans for a world in darkness frozen like a stone light is breaking in a stable for a throne and he shall reign forevermore forevermore and he shall reign forevermore kings and lord of lords and he shall reign forevermore forevermore if i were a wise man i would travel far and if i were a shepherd I would do my part for as I am. 
kings and lord on lords and he shall reign forevermore forevermore in my major lies the one who made the starry skies may be born for sacrifice Christ the Messiah to our hopes and to our fears, Savior of the world appears, the promise of eternal years, Christ the Messiah, and He shall reign forevermore, forevermore, and He shall reign forevermore, forevermore. Christmas reading. We come giving thanks that the gifts we've been given are the gifts we can give. We open our hearts, readying them for the gift of a new year. The promises of hope, peace, joy, and love, and light are the divine gifts we receive. The gift of hope is an essential tool, survival tool, because it reminds us that the hard times do not have the last word. The gift of Christ's peace reminds us that we can have peace even in the midst of non-peaceful situations. The gift of joy is not the equivalent of happiness, but rather the deep call to delight in the small things. The gift of love is the clarion call to us as Jesus' disciples. The more love we put into the world, the better the world will be. The gift of Christ's light is the reassurance that we are never alone. Light these candles as a sign that we will be present with assurance in the world. Let us pray. Holy living light of God, you are our reassuring presence. Let this assurance grow in our lives each day so we can be a presence of assurance to others. Unwrap and open our hearts. May they be so. Amen. Would you please stand and continue to worship with us?
seated and we invite the children to come forward for children's time. Good morning, guys. Happy New Year's Eve. Raise your hand if you plan on staying up till midnight. All right, parents of those children, raise your hand if they plan on staying up till midnight. <laughs> Oops. Uh, guys, it's so fun to be here with you. Jeff stole my fun fact about today being one, two, three, one, two, three. I'm a dad now too, Jeff. You have to share those dad jokes and fun facts. <laughs> so guys, have you ever heard of the term New Year's resolution? Do you guys know what a New Year's resolution is? Have you ever made one before? All right, so a New Year's resolution. This is really big when I was younger. Uh, just as a quick poll, how many adults in here have done New Year's resolutions before? Okay, probably a good half of you, a couple of teens up there. A New Year's resolution is when at New Year's Eve you say, this year I'm going to accomplish this. Maybe I'm going to read more. Maybe I'm going to work out more. Maybe I'm going to try a new sport or a new food. And you commit to doing something for that new year. And it's something you're supposed to do throughout the year. Now, all the adults and people in this room who have done a New Year's resolution, raise your hand if you've broken that resolution before. 
Almost everybody. <laughs> Guys, it's kind of a running joke. When people make New Year's resolutions, sometimes it's followed up with the saying, New Year, New Me. Say that back to me. New Year. There you go. And it's kind of a silly saying. People don't always take it real seriously. But what I want to remind you guys is if you hear of any New Year's resolutions or anyone saying that, is that we are so blessed because even if we are trying New Year's resolutions and if you look down the crowd, even if we mess up on our New Year's resolutions, our God is still and always the same. There is no new year, new God. It is God as he has always been and always will be. And Caleb and Tessa, you guys, as you lit that Advent candle, you talked about the gift of assurance. Kiddos, say assurance. That was really adorable. Good job. Uh, <laughs> no, we find assurance in our God because he is constant, because he is faithful, and because he is always good to us, no matter what. So guys, if anything, if you're going to do any New Year's resolutions that you can really, really commit to, how about we all make a New Year's resolution that we're going to trust God a little bit more this year, that we're going to pray more, and that we're going to spend more time with God this year. Does that sound like a good resolution? Do you guys think you can help me keep that resolution? Awesome. Well, let's start by all praying together then. Lord, thank you so much for this time of fellowship. Thank you for being a God of assurance a God that we can take hope and comfort in. Lord, let us prioritize you. Let us make you the top of our priority list. And God, as we find that comfort and hope that you offer us, let us find a renewed commitment and faith to you as we get ready to go into this new year. Thank you, Lord, for 2023, and thank you for the gift that will be 2024. And thank you for these kiddos. Amen. Thank you, guys. Well, good morning. Happy New Year's Eve. Are we ready to celebrate? I said we, we get here first and, and we come to church and we worship and then we celebrate tonight, right? Very good. Well, we we're getting ready to welcome in a whole new year. So, so on the count of three, how are, like some of you done New Year's, re, new Year's resolutions? On the count of three, just shout out your resolution. We're all amongst friends here. One, two, three. I will never be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now <laughs> on December 31st of next year, or... Yeah, December 31st, 2024, I'm going to ask you, did you keep those? I don't know. Who said they're never going to get in trouble? Brayden. We can only hope, Brayden. <laughs> no, it's good to be here this morning and to gather together on this last day of 2023. What joys do you have as we come together? Pam's dad is turning 90 today. Great. They're, they're going to have a birthday party for 90 years old today. Joy, joy. Any other joys? Yeah. As we, as we kind of look back even through this year, we kind of start thinking about all those joys. Kathy's Kathy's joyful, glad, happy that her mom came through her stroke. A lot of things to celebrate as we look, kind of do that year review, and I'll talk about that here in a little bit. Now there's things as we look forward to in 2024, there's things that weren't so great about 2023. We're ready to give it the boot, right? I mean, it's like, see ya. We have so much to look forward to, but are there any other special prayer requests as we enter into this time together, time of prayer together? Your grandson. We're, we're going to 
going to wrap all of your grandchildren in bubble wrap, Steph. Her grandson broke his arm. Between yours and Sherry Bennett's grandson, we're just going <laughs> to, we'll hope 2024 is better for them. Prayed for continued healing there. Let us go to God together in prayer. God of wisdom, God of truth, at the beginning of this, as we approach a new year, we, we do, we look back and we look forward. In this past year, we've experienced joy and we've experienced sorrow. We've felt blessed and we've been challenged. Some things went by way, way too fast and other things lingered for far too long. God, here in this place, we are reminded that you are present through it all. We are reminded that we are never alone. We are reminded that nothing can separate us from your love. So as we approach this new year, we pause in a bit of silence to reflect on the year that has passed. God, we remember the things from this past year that we are most thankful for. We recall the moments that, are the hap that were the happiest. We consider those times where we felt most alive. and We recognize the times where we gave and received the most love. God, we are so grateful that you were with us in those times. Father, we also remember things from this past that we are less thankful for. We recall those moments that weren't so good. We consider the times that life felt draining for us. We, we recognize the times that, that we gave and received le the least amount of love. That God, we are still grateful for you are present in those times too. Gracious God, as we approach this new year, we look forward in anticipation to see what you're going to do next. We're confident that you'll be with us still, and, we, and we're just we're thankful for when we're happy. We're thankful for when we're not. We're thankful when we feel alive and when we feel drained and when we give and we receive love. But you are there through it all, guiding us and holding us up. And God, the world we live in, it is a, it is a messy and challenging place. It, there are places of pain and doubt and fear. There's jealousy and, and violence and unfairness. It's full of human failings. Yet God, even in that, you are always present. So today I ask that you give us grace and you give us courage to live faithfully in this imperfect world as perfectly imperfect people. Remind us always of the promises of your kingdom emerging around us and through us. And it is in your kingdom that we pray now using the very words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. There is that overwhelming message of the Christmas story is the assurance that we too are the children of the Holy One. And in, in this, the, in our very presence, can be a gift. We can be a gift if we only allow this, the Spirit to move in and through and around us. Every day of our ordinary lives, we can show up, we can be present, and we can proclaim and be the living presence of hope and peace and joy and love to those around us who need it the very most. 
And so today, we get, as we gather, we are unwrapping that very gift of assurance, the gift of assurance that the Christ child brought along with him upon his birth. And what that did is it moved, it moved God's story from prophecy to redeemed promises, which we're going to look at through our two scripture readings today. Our first passage is going to be taken from Isaiah in the Old Testament, chapter 62, verses 1 through 3. And then we'll turn to the New Testament, and then we'll be looking at, we'll start working in Luke chapter 2. We're going to go to verses 22 through 40. So as we go to our Old Testament passage in Isaiah, know that by the end of Isaiah, the Hebrew people are called out of exile And the author declares with assurance that the people now have a new name for this new time. So let us read this responsively. And again, Isaiah 62, verses 1 through 3. And it says this, For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. Not until her integrity shines like the dawn. The nations will see your vindication and the rulers your splendor. You will be a garland of beauty in Yahweh's hands. Now we move on to the New Testament and Luke's gospel, it is the account of Jesus' life. And in this, there's a story about the presentation of Jesus as an infant in the temple. It's a part of every Jewish family's rituals for their firstborn son. There were people present who recognized him not just as the heir to the household of his earthly father's household coming from the line of David, but also there were people there that knew or recognized his extraordinary extraordinary lineage that he indeed was the Messiah waiting to be seen. So hear this account now found in Luke chapter 2 verses 22 through 40. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people's Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Now there was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came in and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, 
filled with wisdom, and favor of God, the favor of God was upon him. What a glorious story that sometimes we often miss this special story as we, we jump forward on and we get right to the, to the wise men, which we will get to, the, to that next week. But we've got to stop and appreciate this wonderful story. So we give thanks to God for that. So as I said, here we are on this last day of 2023. It's a day where we have an opportunity to look back, a day where we can reflect on the past 365 days. We have an opportunity to re revisit those spaces and places in our lives that have impacted us as we move into a new year together. Our lives are lived one moment at a time, and throughout our lives, if we are lucky, We'll have many moments, those, those go-to moments that we rely on when times are tough. Kind of like a highlight reel in our own life's review. Now for me personally, some of those memorable sacred moments was when I was confirmed in the, in the United Methodist Church. It's when I saw my husband. We met at church on a New Year's Eve. Then, when each of our children were placed in my arms, and then when my clergy stole was placed around my neck for the first time at my ordination. I mean, I get emotional. I get teary-eyed when I think about those sacred moments and I'm, in my life. I, I'm, and I'm getting goosebumps right now, actually thinking about it. Hopefully, you've had some moments like that as well. What are some of your life's most sacred moments? Anybody resonate with that? You have any goosebump moments? A child or a grandchild? A wedding ring being placed on your finger? Maybe it's holding on to a loved one's hands as they slip from this world into another. That too is a sacred moment. Sometimes our most sacred moments, they come along when we least expect them. And sometimes our most sacred moments come years and years, of, after years and years and years of waiting. And within this Christmas story, in between the visits of the shepherds and the magi, there's a sacred moment for a man and a woman named Simeon and Anna, and again, we often just go right on past this. We often overlook this. But we need to stop. We need to pause. We need to, we need to look into this time. See, after Jesus was born, the days began to slip away one by one. And the angels who sang on the night of his birth, they didn't have a repeat performance. They didn't do that every day. People went on about their work just as they always had. The sun rose in the morning and in the evening just like usual. I'm sure the shepherds went back and continued to pasture their flocks in the fields around Bethlehem. For many, life just went on and it continued its usual course just as if nothing, nothing at all, nothing miraculous had happened but not for Mary and Joseph, because Mary and Joseph, they had this special child in their arms. They were holding on to the Redeemer of the world. And every day they held him, and they fed him, cradled him, and they nurtured him. See, centuries before, before Jesus was born, all the firstborn in Egypt were put to death. That God had spared the firstborn of the Israelites in the land of Goshen. Therefore, it became tradition that all firstborn sons were always brought to the temple, and the male infants were presented to be consecrated to the Lord. So it was at this time where the mother would show her baby to the priest so that the priest could bless him, knowing that God's eyes were now looking down upon this baby in love. So in acknowledgement of God's love, the parents would offer a material sacrifice. 
Rich people would offer, often offer up a lamb, or it, where, while more common parents would offer up maybe a pair of pigeons or doves. So because he was the firstborn, Mary and Joseph took Jesus to Jerusalem, which was about a a two hours away from Bethlehem. And this was the first time uh, that Jesus was in Jerusalem. He was in the city, his own city, the city of a great king. (laughs) No one paid any amount of great attention to Joseph and Mary or to this tiny baby They didn't even recognize this royal child that Mary carried in her arms. And like any other couple, Mary and Joseph entered into the temple, and they offered the usual sacrifice for people of their own social and and or financial class. And the priest approached them, unthinkingly laid his hands on this child, and most likely just he blessed Jesus as a matter of routine, just just like he would any other male infant. This priest blessed the Messiah without even ever realizing it. And then suddenly, suddenly an elderly gray man, gray-haired man entered the temple with great haste and he hurried straight to Mary. This man, as you heard in the scripture, his name is Simeon. And he knew... He knew who this child was. Simeon knew who this baby was because God had spoken to him and told him. Simeon's whole lifelong desire was to meet the one who would redeem his people. And God had revealed to him that Simeon would not die until he was able to meet his Savior face to face. Now, Simeon, I think that song, Seasons, that we just sang earlier, that could have very much been Simeon's song. He and his people were living in some really dark times as the shadow of death was creeping creeping on towards him, and his people were living in oppression, and they'd been waiting and waiting and waiting for something different to occur. And on this day, on this very day, this day, Something amazing was happening. This day was so different. This day in the temple was the day that Simeon had waited his whole life for. It, the day that, that God had pro- that had got the day that God had promised had finally come. And all because of an encounter with a couple and on and their son on this day. This day was the most beautiful day in Simeon's entire life. Now Mary must have seen or understood Simeon's joy as she offered this baby up to him. And and the old man takes, he takes this tiny baby in his arms and he's overcome with emotion. And he prays God and he cries out and he says, now I can die in peace. For my eyes have seen the salvation of the Lord, the hope and peace and love and joy of all of eternity is now being cradled in Simeon's arms. And no longer would he fear death. No longer would he live his life in a sense of darkness. For he held in his very arms the light of the world. And then Simeon began to sing. He sang out of that light with a great, it was a great and beautiful light that descended from heaven to beam down, not only on Israel, but upon all people and all nations. And Simeon went on to to say that many would come to love this child and would receive great happiness through him. But there would be others that would hate him. This child would cause some to fall and others to rise. And Simeon even had more things to say as his aged eyes saw way far, far into the future. He knew that Mary's joy was greater than anyone else's joy, but her sorrow would also be greater than anyone else's sorrow. 
Simeon knew that Mary, as the mother of an infant, she would suffer intense pain as if someone would run a sword right through her very soul. And then when Simeon fell silent, here came another voice. And this time, the new speaker was an 84-year-old prophetess named Anna. She was also a widow who spent, way, she spent so much time of her life in the temple. And Anna comes up, and she takes her place right near this family, and she gazes. She takes a gaze at this tiny little baby, and like Simeon, she saw so much more than just a tiny infant when she looked at that little face. Anna and Simeon both knew right away that they were both looking at the very Son of God. And not letting this, this sacred moment silently pass, Anna sings out, she sings out with great wonder from the moment she went on, from that moment on, she goes on to tell everyone that she met the Redeemer. She met them and that the Redeemer had come the, the, and bringing along with them the gifts of comfort and assurance to the world around her and around everyone else. Now, now ironically, the finely clothed priests and the Pharisees weren't present in this temple at all with them that day. I mean, after all, w w they weren't going to be looking for a, for a little tiny vulnerable Messiah that had to be carried in to a temple by, by very humble parents offering up two doves? I mean, they, they were looking and, and were, look, were looking towards a much different, they had a much different type of king in mind. They weren't interested in a humble little Messiah who came to earth as a child. But Anna and Simeon had encountered greatness in the midst of the ordinary, and they knew it. Anna and Simeon were open to God's voice and, the, and his presence in their lives, and they made the most of their post-Christmas their post encounter with Christ. They embraced this sacred moment. Anna... And Simeon were two people filled with the Holy Spirit. In the final chapters of their lives, the Spirit enabled them to see the baby as the consolation and as the redemption that they had waited their whole lives for. They rejoiced and they thanked God for the sight of baby Jesus, and seeing Jesus enabled them to see something greater than death. They could see God's salvation in Jesus and therefore face their remaining days and their death in a sense of peace. These two old aged souls spent their lives waiting for the redemption of God's, that God had promised. And in the infant Jesus, they recognized and they embraced the distinct presence of God they got it. They got it. They, they understood. They understood this, this magnitude of this holy meeting. And they didn't miss the chance to unwrap this, this gift, this magnificent, this miraculous, sacred moment. Harry now, Henry Nowen once said that the Lord is coming. He's always coming when you have ears to hear and eyes to see, you will recognize him at any moment in your life. So with that statement, I, it sends my brain, and hopefully yours too, it sends my brain wondering and having all sorts of questions, things for us all to think about. Do we know? Do we know when we are in the presence of God? Do we realize it? Do we recognize and affirm holy moments? As we, as we have celebrated Christmas, we have visited the manger. But, but how does that change us? 
How does catching a glimpse of Jesus change us? What difference does Christmas make in our lives? How do the people around us know that we have had sacred moments ourselves? And how do people know that God's promises are true? What impact does the birth of Christ have on our own lives? And, and how will people know that we celebrate Christmas, that just because we celebrate Christmas on December 25th, how will they know that we believe in Christmas and the meaning of Christmas the other 364 days of the year? How will people know that? What will be different with us and through us and for us once the decorations have been put away will our christmas spirit be gone too you know I, i've heard it say christmas is for kids yeah christmas is for kids and we're all children of god so there you go it's for us too so how do we live out our lives as post-Christmas people? As we move forward into the new year, we, we, we can't let the things around us move us away, further away from the stable or from the manger or, or the beauty found in Bethlehem. Yes, in our world, it's so easy to become cynical and jaded and hopeless and despairing because we are real people with real, eno real emotions, and real messy things happen to us. But the worst thing that can happen, the biggest tragedy that we can experience in this coming year is, is if we forget about the awe and the wonder of the birth of Christ. We cannot ever forget about the power of wonder at Christmas. We can't, we can't ever begin to dismiss the assurance that has been given to us through the gift of Christmas. And as we age like Simeon and Anna, and Aunt, we can't let our souls grow dim. Like Simeon and Anna, we must remember God's promises, promises to be found in those sacred moments in our ordinary lives. We must not ever put away or grow way too old or way too, ear, too weary to ever yield to a Christmas spirit. If you're like me, sometimes I often look in the mirror and I think, oh my gosh, my mom's here. But anyway, <laughs> who is that woman? But I pause and I look at myself and you think, ah, oh. and you take a moment just for a little bit of self-reflection. I think, oh, are there more laugh lines? Are there more wrinkles? Are there more gray hairs or are there just more signs of being younger, longer? Are there bags under the eyes or are they just signs of living a well-traveled life? <laughs> I mean, we do have a tendency to scrutinize and over-examine ourselves. We might ask ourselves, look behind all that, and we wonder, is there any fire in there? Is there any passion in there? Have we forgotten about the times where and when we have experienced the presence of God? Are there any embers left from the sacred moments that have fueled our souls? Are there signs, are there signs of, uh, or is there excitement left of the, the thought of the fil fulfillment of God's promises? They're still true. Is there still somewhere in there buried a young child that is still waiting and wondering about life and the joy that it brings? Though our physical bodies may age and our skin and our eyelids become saggy and droopy, and our, but our spirits and our souls must remain forever young as we have eyes that focus on the hope of God's promises and the vision that embraces the miracle of the manger. Our hope must never grow dim. We must not give in to the darkness that, that, that 
and our lives and live as fatigued souls. Our eyes must never close to the potential of joy. We must not ever grow weary in the pursuit of a deep-seated joy that can be found in a new sacred moment, just like a child on Christmas morning. No matter our age, our condition, or our position, we can ex still experience wonder and live as post-Christmas people because we have, there is one who is called Wonderful. And Simeon and Anna, they got it and they held on to that all of their days. And so can we. When we can embrace Christmas for what it truly is, we will never miss an opportunity to embrace the Christ child. Jesus is all of God's word. It's God's promises made flesh among us. So this year... It's so ironic that you're, the Risley family is here because I, 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 think about, I think about your mom and at her service we talked about never putting away all of Christmas. And I remember coming up here on the Sunday after her service and there was two Christmas ornaments here. And they're still in my office. They're on my bookcase. So I challenge you, leave something out after Christmas whether it's the baby Jesus or a Christmas ornament or a cherished cherry picture, leave a little bit of Christmas out all the three days of the year to remind us of the gift that we've been given this, at this special time. That's, your New Year, that's a New Year's resolution that I think we can all easily keep, right? So do it, please. Let us pray together. Thank you, God, for giving your all, the, the word made flesh in your, in your son, Jesus. God, we thank you for your gifts of love and light, and let us not shine. Let us not let our own lights to dwindle, but rather help us to be like Simeon and Anna and guide us to go forth to shine anew. And because the light of Christ has come into the world, and that darkness can never Put it out. Amen. Amen. We want to invite you to respond to this good news that we've heard today. Um, we're going to have a moment to reflect on how God is inviting us to respond to this and to remember and find ways that we can continue to remember the significance of this Christmas season throughout the rest of the year. Um, one of the ways that we respond to God is through the giving of our offering. And so um, at this time, I'm going to invite the ushers to come forward to receive our tithes and offerings. And you'll see on the screen that there are numerous ways that you can give, um, either uh, in person here or online um, or uh, mail it in. Um, we want to just respond and give back to God a portion of what he has given to us. And if you're a guest with us here today, um, we are so glad that you're here, your presence here with us today is your offering and is your gift, and that is enough for us. And so we invite the ushers to come forward to receive our tithes and offerings as we reflect on this message and as we listen to this special music from Joyce.
present God, take this offering of ourselves, a new promise to be your people, here holding a renewed vision of your reign here. Take this, take this, uh, take this and remind us that to be a light and follow you anew as we journey across the borders of time and find a new year and new places to be your renewed people. Amen. We invite you to remain standing and join us in our closing hymn, Blessed Assurance, can be found in your hymnal on page 369, and we'll sing all three stanzas. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine, oh what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I am my Savior, am happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. I do want to take this moment to extend a personal invitation for y'all to come by the Parsonage this afternoon from 2 to 4. And yes, we can turn on the Chiefs game. So as we have focused on the gift of being present in this season, we have discovered God's presence with us in the midst of our messy lives and in a messy world. We alone cannot heal our lives or heal the world, but if we are mindful, we can certainly participate in what God is doing and where go where God is leading. So go now in the name of the Holy Presence, the divine gift, and the spirit of assurance to be truly present, and to be the gift of presence for others. Amen.